puniest greens I ever did see. What's your mumble about, Granny? A body can't find no greens in these Beverly Hills. I've been out all morning, and all I got was a scraggly handful of rhubarb leaves. That hole might have had two bushels. Powder, mustard. Well, you're gonna simmer down, Granny. Maybe Jethro and me will bring you back some greens from the country today. Oh, you going shooting? Yep, Mr. Drysdale asked Jethro and me to go out with him and another fella. Hey, what are you going to shoot? Some more of them skeets? Oh, no, no. Today we're going to be shooting game. Oh, praise be. We can use some fresh meat. Try and get a possum or a squirrel. <laughs> well, according to Mr. Drysdale, we're going to be shooting some game called golf. <laughs> Intarnation is a golf. Well, uh, don't rightly know, Granny, but they must be thicker in crows in a corn patch around here, because Mr. Drydell says everybody in Beverly Hills shoots a... I ain't never seen no strange critters running around. They must live in holes in the ground like a gopher. Yeah, I reckon maybe you're right. Just the other day, I heard him say he shot nine holes of golf and got 57. There must be a mess of them to a hole. <laughs> What's that, Melanie? Well, these here's what you call golf bags. Mm, doggy. Sure is a heap fancier than a gunny sack for toting game. You know something, Jim? Them golfs must be about gopher size. If Mr. Drysdale can get 57 of them in one of these. <laughs> golfs ain't nothing like gophers, Granny. Them things can fly. Fly? Golfs? Yes, sir, Uncle Jim. Mr. Drysdale said the fellow we're shooting with today. Uh, uh, what's his name again, Ellie? Oh, uh, Mr. Durocher, Mr. Leo Durocher. Yeah, well, anyway, he got four birdies yesterday. <laughs> Those must be mighty funny looking critters. Fly like a bird and live in the ground like a gopher. <laughs> well, Mr. Durocher knows how to get them rascals. He shot 32. He just ain't in it with Mr. Drysdale. He shot 57. <laughs> Well, the only thing I know is that them rascals is sure hard to kill. After you shoot them, you gotta club them. What did you say? What's that, Granny? The big boxes are just full of golf clubs. Look at this, Uncle Jed. Mmm, that's a wicked looking knob on this club. You could brain a bear with that. You think that one's wicked? Look at this one. That knob is solid iron. Oh, here's something else Mr. Drysdale sent over to us. He said, we're supposed to wear these things when we shoots golfs. All right, doggies, Jethro, them golfs must be the toughest little critters there is. First you shoot them, then you club them, then you stomp them with spikes. That is no. Miss Jane says to me, she says, when your pa and Jethro go out to shoot, tell them to watch out for the traps. Traps, too? Ooh, I can't wait to tangle with one of them golfs. <laughs> Pure scrappiness. They must make a mountain lion look like a pussycat. <laughs> That's the truth, Uncle Jed. But they come right at you. You gotta dodge them and duck them. We got the fella to show us how. Who's that? Mr. Durocher. Miss Jane says he's a famous dodger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. He's so good, he coaches all the other dodgers. <laughs> no, he... I can't wait to meet Mr. Durocher. Me too. <laughs> With the Dodgers, the happy team, where winning friends is a lot more important than winning ball games. Yeah, you sure won a lot of friends in San Francisco last season. <laughs> Got a great sense of humor, you have. Also a great pitching arm. But well, what do you say? You ready to sign with us? Sure. Great. As soon as you top the fifty thousand dollar bonus off for the Giants, baby. Fifty. Are you still considering the Giants? Why not? Why not? You can't pitch in Candlestick Park. That wind will blow you right off the mound. Don't worry, that 50,000 will hold me down. You like money, huh? Love it. You like golf? Not as much as money. <laughs> Sign with us, and you can have both. You know who I'm playing golf with today? Who? Bank president and a millionaire. So what does that do for me? What does it do for you? The millionaire, if you sign with us and the millionaire is a Dodger fan, he may set you up in business. 
And what's his name? There are so many Dodger fans that are millionaires, I can't keep track of all of them. <laughs> I'd just as soon talk on the golf courses here. Atta boy. And you'll like playing with this bank president. They tell me that he bets big and plays lousy. We call him Drysdale the Pigeon. Don Drysdale's a bank president? No, no, not Don. But being a Dodger pitcher is like being a bank president. What do you mean? Both named Drysdale, right? Right? Oh, come on. <laughs> sure wish Mr. Drysdale would hurry and pick us up. These clubs is getting awful heavy. You know something, Jethro? We can tote them clubs in these bags. I just said them bags was for toting golfs. Until we get to golf so we can tote the clubs in it. Golly, Uncle Jed, that's a good idea. Come on. <laughs> when ain't nobody ever thought of that before? Mr. Carl, Miss Jane just called from the bank. She said Mr. Drysdale couldn't shoot golf with you today. He's got a big business meeting. Oh, shucks, I was counting on it. Me too. Well, I'll tell you what, Jethro, let's load up the truck, and we go over there, and we shoot some with Mr. DuRocher. Okay, Uncle Jeff. Now, you tell Granny that I don't know when we get back, but we'll bring her some fresh-cut green. Okay, Carl. You know where to go? Yes, sir, Uncle Jed. It's, um, Wilshire Country Club. Be nice to get back in the country again. Baby, post it. What are you doing with this golf club? <laughs> He'll never miss it. Besides, it's dandy for stirring greens. <laughs> Take care of it, Bill. What spot? Think number 12. Right. Out of there. Is this the place where they shoot the golf? Yes. You fellas gardeners? Oh, Uncle Jed is. He's the best there is. Well, Jed throws right handy, too. <laughs> you heard to take care of the greens? As a matter of fact, we did promise to cut some greens, yeah. <laughs> Park it around in the back and ask for the greenskeeper. Thank you very kindly. Yes, sir. Thank you. Jethro, I think you're right about them golfs being birds. I was? Yeah. When I come out here, I seen some people take two little white eggs out of that hole over yonder. <laughs> well, I hope we get us some. I think I got this golf shooting figured out, too. I've been watching, and this whole pasture's full of people knocking them little eggs along the ground. Oh, yeah? You know, the way I got it figured, when the golf comes out of his hole to get his eggs back, you shoot him. <laughs> I think you have got it figured out, Uncle Jay. Hey, this young fella got himself a whopper ready. Hey, where'd you get that, little fella? Mr. DeRocha gave it to me, and he signed it, too. Is Mr. DeRocha here? Right over there on that bench. If you ask him, he might give you one, too. Well, thanks, Sonny. Come on, Jethro. Great game you arranged, Leo. The bank president canceled, the millionaire didn't show up, and we can't get a caddy. I talked to the starter. He's going to give us the first two that come in. Look, i got to catch a plane to San Francisco tonight, Leo. Look, kid, I told you. Forget about San Francisco. The Dodgers are Is, the uh, greatest... Mr. DuRocher here? Right here. Well, uh, Mr. Drysdale can't come, but me and Jethro would like to go along with you, if that's all right. Oh, it's great. See, I told you we'd get caddy. <laughs> now, whose bags are those? Oh, Mr. Drysdale sent them over. Look. Put them either over there in the rack, take ours. Oh, thank you very kindly. That's mighty neighborly of you. Oh, I've seen some seedy-looking caddies in my day. They're really scraping the bottom of the barrel at this club. Well, let's give them a break. You know, Walsh, I think these fellows could use a few bucks. All right, I'm game. Reckon we ought to take our guns, Uncle Jade? They seem to want us to use their stuff. Reckon we ought to oblige them. <laughs> Womp it, mister. <laughs> Look, fellas, no talking while he's swinging. Holy cow, what a drive. All right, just look. Uncle Jed, you reckon it's all right to talk now? I reckon so. That other fella ain't swinging. <laughs> Wobbit, 
stupid, Mr. DeRocher. <laughs> You'd make a great umpire. Oh, thank you, sir. Well, I'd appreciate it very much if you'd be quiet while I'm swinging also. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Shot, Leo. Just luck. Let's take a card and lose those guys. Okay, I'm with you. <laughs> If I sink this, I'll birdie the first hole. A 40-footer? No chance. No chance. You just watch me, kid. I got the magic touch. My <laughs> doggies, we thought we'd lost you. Yeah, so did we. You fixing to womp it again? Yeah, I'm fixing to womp it again. Say, you fellas ever caddy before? No, I don't reckon so. Have you ever been on a golf course before? Uh, no, sir, but we sure is anxious to learn about it. <laughs> you want to learn? Come on with me, then, fella. Come on. Say, hey, mister, could you tell me where I might find some greens? <laughs> well, what do you think you're standing on? Right here? Yeah. My dog is somebody done cut him so close to the ground, there ain't nothing left. <laughs> some greens to eat? Yeah, I promised Granny I'd bring her home something to cook tonight. <laughs> say, old timer up. How long's it been since you had a decent meal? I'd say about a week. That's when we had the last to salt it down possibility. <laughs> Got the idea? Just stand there quietly and hold the pin, right? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> saved it for you, Mr. DeRocher. What do you mean you saved it for me? If I hadn't stopped it, it'd have fell right in that little hole there. Oh, Give me that ball. Oh, I'll take these, Leo. Look, these poor guys haven't eaten in a week. Mr. DeRocher? The golf egg is stuck in the top of that tree yonder. Well, why don't you two fellas just climb up there and get it out of there? Well, ain't no call to do that. Jethro can knock it out for you if we can find some firm to throw. You mean you can knock that little ball out the top of that tree? Well, easy if I could find a rock or something. Never mind a rock. <laughs> Here, use this. Hey, Uncle Jed, it's another one of them big eggs. Hey, did you hit that golf ball up in that tree? Hit it? I can't even see it. I'll knock it down for you, Mr. DeRocher. Okay. <laughs> Where'd you learn to throw like that? Hunting squirrels. Jethro can knock a squirrel out of a tree clean across his pasture. Can you throw like that in the level? What you mean? Well, could you hit the trunk of that little tree over there? You mean the one with the knot hole in it? Knot? Nah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the one. I reckon so. If he can hit that trunk from this distance, he's got the greatest arm since Satchel Page. I'll fling it for you, Mr. DeRocher. Okay. I'll put it right in the knot hole. <laughs> How long can you throw like that? Well, after about eight or ten hours, my arm kind of stiffens up, so I have to start throwing with my left. <laughs> I can throw harder with my right, but my left don't get tired so quick. <laughs>
Well, how do you play it, Paul? Well, for as I can figure, you get one of them golf eggs stuck in the top of a tree, and then you knock it out with a your baseball. <laughs> yeah, and then if you knock it down, you get to throw the baseball through a knot hole. That sounds like fun. Can I play, Jeff? Well, now, Ellie, I don't know. Well, I can throw just as good as Jethro. Yeah, you can. She can't either. Can too. Can I? Now, now, listen. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's let Mr. DeRocher decide. He's coming over here in a few minutes with something called a contract for Jethro. Well, I want one of them contracts, too. Well, oh, wait. Let's just sit here and wait for Mr. DeRocher. Stop worrying, Buzzy. It'll be okay. What do you mean, stop worrying? If this kid, Walt, signs with the Giants, O'Malley will kill us. Relax. This Jethro is a one-man pitching staff. Believe me, if we sign him, you can put, you know, seats in the bullpen. Let all the other pitchers sell hot dogs. O'Malley would love us. <laughs> now, don't throw too hard, Ellie Mae. You'll drag Jethro plumb through the woodwork. Okay, Paul. There goes that spook playing music in the walls again. <laughs> Conjure that rascal out of there. Well, I reckon I might as well get out front. Somebody always comes to the door when that music plays. I thought you said this Jethro was a poor boy. They must be the caretakers here. They're so poor, I know they haven't eaten in a week. And he still threw the ball that good. And fast. If we feed this boy, we're going to have to have a gorilla to catch him. They work for bananas. And I think O'Malley would love it. No, <laughs> Sure. Mr. Clampett, I want you to meet our general manager, Mr. Pavese. Well, howdy, howdy. Come in, come in. Well, now, Jethro, after you throw this year baseball into the knot hole on that tree, well, then what happens? Well, then Mr. Durocher throws his arms around you and says, praise be, I got me a pitcher. <laughs> pitcher? According to him, that's what baseball teams is always need. Big, strong pitchers. Baseball, a pitcher is a fellow that throws that there ball. Well, what do you throw it at, Jethro? You throw it at a plate. <laughs> Bust the plate? Oh, Ellie, this kind of plate is made out of wood or something, and it sets in the ground. Well, you wouldn't get me to eat off of it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't eat off of it, Granny. A feller stands beside it holding a bat. Bat? Sounds like a game you play in a cave. <laughs> How do you hold the bat? There's only one way, Ellie. You have to catch that varmint by the end of his wings and spread eagle him so he can't bite you. <laughs> no, Granny. You have gotta... you ever been bat bit? I am, but... Now, at... don't tell me about bat biting, boy. I was bat bit before you was born. <laughs> bats don't bite, Granny. They's made out of wood. <laughs> wood bats? Yes, ma'am. And you don't play baseball in a cave, neither. You play it on a diamond. A diamond? Yes, ma'am. Who told you all this, boy? Mr. DuRocher. And you swallowed it. Well, Granny, he's a coach. He might be a coach. But if you ask me, he's got a few horses missing. <laughs> Everybody, Mr. Du Rocher's there. He's got a fella with him name of uh, Bub Basie. Who's he, Paul? Well, he's the general manager of them Dodgers. Uh, uh, Mr. Du Rocher calls him Buzzy. Well, if you ask me, Mr. Du Rocher is the one that's Buzzy. Are you coming, Granny? No. I'm going to stay here and do something sensible. I'm going to boil these golf eggs. <laughs> Say, this entire state belongs to you? Sure does. It's bigger than Dodger Stadium. Yes, sir? Show Mr. Bavese how you can throw baseball. Oh, just a minute, Leo. These people are pretty prosperous. Let's find out how much money he's going to want. Money? Shucks, no, Mr. Bavese. I don't want no money. I just throw for the fun of it. Oh, Mally will love you. Look, yes, so. Get back over there about 60 feet. You know, right this side of that wall there and throw the ball. Well, there ain't no knot holes around here. Just pretend 
Just pretend that this is not all right here and throw it right in this pocket. Okay, Mr. DeRocher. Think you're going to hurt your hand, Mr. DeRocher? Not with this mitt on. Watch this, Buzzy. Okay, Jethro. Right in the all knot hole. Let's show him the kind of stuff you got. Looks like he carries his own rosin bag. <laughs> Ready, Mr. DeRocher? <laughs> Mr. DeRocher! Mr. DeRocher, come You all right? <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Bavasi. I held back, but I reckon not enough. Lieutenant Jethro, coaches we got, hitches we need. <laughs> What's all that grease on your hand? Oh, that there's possum fat. I can't throw straight at all lest I put that on my hands first. You're kidding. No, sir. I've been throwing rocks like that since I was this high. Now I can't throw nothing that ain't smeared with possum fat. Did I hear that right? You sure did. He can't throw anything that isn't smeared with possum fat. Look, Buzzy, maybe we can get the commissioner to legalize the possum ball. <laughs> uh -uh. So long. Well, where are you going, Mr. D. Rocher? To drown myself. <laughs> I never seen a feller so fond of water as that Mr. DeRocher. Yes, sir, Mr. O'Malley. I'll catch the 5.30 plane to San Francisco. No, don't worry. I won't let that Western kid sign with the Giants. Bring him back or what? Off the Golden Gate Bridge? But I just got out of the water. <laughs> yes, sir. Goodbye. Gee. Here you are, Mr. Dewrocher. Well, this soup will warm you up. Yeah. Here, have a piece of Granny's cornbread and put hair on your chest. Yeah. Will it put anything up here? <laughs> hey, it's kind of sparse, ain't it? Sparse? I've seen more hair grow on a hog's liver. <laughs> hey, this is pretty good. Chicken, isn't it? You didn't miss it much. Chicken hog. <laughs> Would you like a golf egg? A what? A boiled golf egg. <laughs> Boiling them made them kind of rubbery. And that yolk is black as coal. Maybe with a lot of salt on it. That'll fix them up. Nice. Oh, thanks. I'm not hungry. Do you suppose my clothes are dry yet? Well, they ought to be. Jethro and Ellie May is running around the block, trailing them in the breeze. Here you are, Mr. DeRocher. Bone dry. Well, thanks a million. Say, Jethro, are you sure that you can't throw without possum fat? Oh, yes, sir. I'm positive. I can throw as good as Jethro without possum fat. She sure can. Ellie May can out throw anybody. Oh, yes, sir. She's got plenty of stuff. Yeah. We could never hide it under a dodgy uniform. <laughs> you come on outside and I'll show you. Well, I got an hour before my play. Don't mind if I do play a little catch. All right, Ellie. Aim for the glove. <laughs> Here we go again. That man spends more time in the water than a bullfrog. <laughs>